everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight to paint our adorable dragon friend. He's so cute. So glad you're joining us. I'm Deb Kagosi, and I have been um, painting with people virtually and in person since 2014 with Paint and Chill with my sidekick, Nick, who's not currently in the room, but he will be back because he always likes to help. So tonight, um, thanks for joining us. I think we're going to have some fun painting, but also Nick is going to join in and do some Family Feud with us, our version of Family Feud, so that we can um, just do something different. If you don't want to paint tonight, that's absolutely fine. Nick just threw the paper plate at me. Uh, if you don't want to paint tonight, that's absolutely fine. Just hang out with us, play some Family Feud, or um, just laugh. Our, our goal is just to have a good time, forget some of the craziness that's going out there in the world if just for just a little bit of time. Um, so we're going to do our dragon friend painting tonight. And on Saturday, I hope you'll join us on Saturday because we're also going to be doing on Saturday this adorable llama. Isn't he so cute? So we're going to be painting the llama and playing Family Feud. And everyone who paints the llama names their llama, and post their picture on Facebook is going to be mailed a motivational bracelet. So I hope you're able to join us same, same time, 7 o'clock on Saturday night. Um, anytime you need any of the uh, patterns, like the pattern for the llama, just send me a message so I can email all that over to you and email the supplies over to you, and um, we'll have a good time. I always try to think of ways to keep the cost down for people. So you'll see when I send you the supply list, it's always kind of keeping in mind that um, we don't need to spend a lot of money on supplies to, to have a good time and to have a good outcome. So tonight for the Dragon Friend painting, I did send a couple people the pattern, but this is the pattern that, um, that we're going to be using, that we're going to be tracing. Now, if you got the pattern and you don't have graphite paper. Graphite paper is the best, easiest way to get the pattern onto the canvas. But if you don't um, have graphite paper and you do have the, um, the pattern, then um, you can, a couple of things. You can, some people are super good at, at freehanding and, and just getting in there and painting, that's fantastic. But sometimes people like to have the, the confidence of having a pattern. So if you have it and you don't have graphite paper, what you can do is just cut around and just cut your pattern out and cut around it and put it on your canvas and then take a pencil and just go around it super light or around the pattern that way. I also do like to use household, household items to kind of see um, how big things can be, especially for people that don't have patterns. And one thing that I can say is this moon, if you saw my video I posted earlier, is the moon is actually the size of um, a small dinner plate, a salad plate. And so if you um, are just trying to guesstimate and wing it, that's a, um, a good one to use. All right. And then as far as brushes go tonight, I usually paint the background with um, one of the bigger um, like three quarter inch or inch or two inch um, paint brushes that you paint the house with. But um, but the pattern calls to paint it with the, the, this three quarter inch. We're just going to go around in a circle there. So we're going to be painting with a three quarter inch. And then the silhouette itself calls for being traced with a paint marker. But permanent markers work just as well. I would advise that you try it out on your palette, which for me is paper plate or a styrofoam plate because I don't absorb the paint. Um, I don't use the, little, the plastic trays from Dollar Tree because I tend to mix colors together and there's not enough room to do it on those. So, um, so uh, for me, we all know that there's nothing like grabbing a marker that you haven't used in a while and it's dry or it drags. And so I just want to make sure that mine's not dry or, and it doesn't drag. So I believe in this one, so I'm going to keep this one. I also, um, if you have a cotton ball in this particular painting, it's nice to use for the clouds to kind of pounce around for the clouds. If you don't, you probably have a um, vitamin or medicine jar or something that has these in it. You can pull out or a little makeup 
um, sponge that you could use. And if nothing else, you can use a, a brush that's kind of a bristle brush that's kind of worn that, um, you know, maybe it's not your favorite brush and you can use that for the clouds. Okay. Whoop. Sorry, a cotton ball fell apart there. I was almost choked on it. And then we'll just be using a small, either um, a little round brush or the little brush this size to go inside of the silhouette and paint it black. All right. Aye. Aye. So the, the um, painting is on a 12 by 12 canvas. However, because we're in um, Florida, I am using an 11 by 14 canvas tonight but we'll paint the same. So you might be wondering why, because I'm in Florida, I'm using 11 by 14, but telling you to use 12 by 12 is because it's been very rainy. And well, the truth be told, I spilled coffee all over the remaining 12 by 12 canvas I had. Um, so I only had the one and I didn't want to go out in the rain. So that's how that story all ties together. So we're going to be painting, or I'm going to be painting on 11 by 14. You can paint on anything. You can make it as big or small as you want to. All right. So Nick is going to say hi for a second. He's going to jump in every now and then and do family feud with Who us right now. Yeah, that's your turn. Oh, all right. And I'm going to get my graphite paper. You can say hi for a second and then we're going to do family feud. He's going to do the first family feud after we get everything kind of traced. Say hi, everybody. Hi there. How are you? <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> All right, so we are going to, I have graphite paper. If you're using graphite paper, which is the easiest way to get a pattern over, it has a shiny side and a dull side. So the shiny side always goes what down. What color clouds? What color clouds? That's the question I got. What color clouds? We're going to pounce, um, we're going to pounce on them. We're going to pounce some white and mix either a little bit of the purple or a little bit of the blue, whichever you like. So the only colors we really need tonight are white <clears throat> and black. Whatever color blue you see the sky being, keeping in mind we can mix those colors together. And then, um, and then a purple lavender, this one's called purple iris. So the clouds are gonna be mostly white and we're just gonna kind of blend it until we get the um, clouds looking that whitish purplish color that we like. All right. I wish I was Good. blended. I wish you were blended too. Good question. Good question. All right. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to trace the pattern. I'm going to read the first question. And he's going to read the first question. I usually um, uh, use just a, a skewer to trace my pattern just because if you use, I find if you use a pen or a pencil, it, it like really leaves an end in the pattern and kind of ruins it. So we're really only for this particular pattern, it's a pretty simple pattern. And later, uh, this is a cute little boy in here and I love little boys, but if you want your dragon friend to be a girl, I can help you turn into a girl for you too. So I'm just gonna trace around the moon. And while I do that, Nick is going to ask the first family feud question and then you can respond in comments what you think. And then whoever has the most points at the end of the night wins. This question is, well, let's start that over again. This is a question that I chose because of someone that we know and it inspired me to ask this question. So the question is, name someone whose phone calls you screen. I'll say it again and I'll put it in the comments. Name someone whose phone calls you screen. All right, we'll put it on the comments there. And the first person with the correct answer will win. There. All right, talks amongst yourselves. All right, I am almost done tracing around my dragon. He has a lot of little spikies. All right, I'm gonna hold my pattern in place. I'm gonna hold it down. 
and see if I got everything because I tend to skip some stuff. Oh, look, I did. Such a cute pattern. So adorable. No need to um, trace the dots in the sky or the, um, or the, um, what's it called? It's a comet. A comet. The comet. There's a shooting star. No need to trace the dots or the shooting star. Just trace around the moon. Let me see. And I'm going to just keep throwing stuff out of my way as I don't need it. No, 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 no. There. No, there. No, there. No, there. No. I'm trying to show you guys the tracing. There. There. And does that work? Looks great. Perfect. So I just want you to see that you really only need to trace the moon and the dragon. If you don't trace his wings or his um, tail or his spikes exactly um, straight, it doesn't really matter because dragon tails are all kinds of different ways, right? Okay. All right. So I am going to put so the next thing we're going to do actually is we are going to trace the um, the boy, the friend, and the dragon. We're going to trace the, we're going to outline the dragon and the human silhouette with the black marker, okay? Because then we're going to paint all this and that way we can still see our pattern after that, okay? And we're going to fill it in with black anyway, so. All right, here we go. Oh, which one did I decide was best? We're going to try again. Perfect. All right. So now we're just going to trace around. And I do tend to speak rapidly and move rapidly, especially if I've had too much Diet Coke and coffee. So if you need me to slow down, go back, explain. Please don't get frustrated and say, oh, my God, forget it. I can't keep up with her. Just please shoot me a comment and just say, hey, slow down, wait up, hold on. I will not be offended because people ask me that all the time. Yet? Not quite. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me for? It's like the Buddha. Who's a Buddha? Who's me? A, no, it's like the Buddha. Oh, the guy does? Okay, it looks like Lisa said that the person's phone call that she screens is her mother-in-law. <laughs> I would never say that. <laughs> no, you always, you always grab her calls. And what did Anita say? Anita said her oldest son. I'm sure there's a story behind that one. All right, what other guesses do we have out there for whose call out of, uh, not that you green but survey says i don't ever screen your call no i'm not talking about <laughs> you i'm talking about survey says which calls do people tend to screen well mama says a salesman oh know. true i thought she would have said an insurance guy <laughs> <laughs> no he's screening our calls car dealerships <laughs> My oldest son. <laughs> <laughs> we don't screen his calls as much as we know that it's going to be something interesting. All right, I am almost done outlining my dragon's tail. There, he's adorable. Okay, and then this is what it looks like outlined. So that's all we really need to outline is the just the um just the human and the dragon. Alright, I'm just gonna let it dry for just a minute because we're gonna paint this white 
and um, so I want to make sure this is completely dry when we paint it, paint it white. If you don't have a black marker, you can always use black paint and go around and do it. You just have to let it, um, again, you just have to let it dry some first so it doesn't smear when you put the um, white on there, okay? All right, so I am going to, you are going to want something to put water in. And I do advise that you put your water on the side, the hand that you paint with, because if you put it across on the other side, then when you clean your brush in the water and you put it back over, it tends to um, drop water across your painting. All right. And I use, and you'll want some paper towels to sop up the extra water out of the brushes. So I'm just going to put some of those over the side. And as I go along, I try to just throw everything out of my way that I don't need anymore. Like right now, I don't need that skewer anymore. I don't need those markers anymore. And so I am going to go ahead and put down some white paint on my so-called palette. I don't think I closed this last time, so yep. This is what happens when you don't close your paint, then it gets all gopped up, and then when you want to use it, it doesn't come out. All right, so I'm going to put some white there. The snow, the um, snow white paint and the um, titanium white are nice thicker whites. Some white paints are super thin, and that's fine for some things, but clouds, we like it to be a little bit thicker, so the, titan the titanium white is really good for that. Also, we paint the llama on Saturday night. It, the, that titanium paint will be a good, don't stick that in your ear, will be a good one. And then we're gonna use just pieces of the blue. I'm using the, um, I'm using cobalt blue, but um, you can use the um, phthalo blue is really the, kind of the best, but it's hard to find. So the ultramarine blue or this cobalt blue works really well, admiral's blue. But any color that you actually want your um, your sky to be is absolutely fine. Okay, so these are kind of the colors, and you can kind of choose which color that you want your background to be. All right, and we really encourage people to be creative and and um, and believe in their individuality and just you know just experiment you know there's no right or wrong way to do it we really really believe in that so i'm putting down a little bit of a um, couple of colors the white the blue and a purple i have purple iris but a couple of different colors purple will, will work so, so painting there already but nothing on my shirt yet so that's the good news uh, it's early it's early <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, I'm going to take my three-quarter inch brush and um, get it wet and then just get the excess wet off of there. And then I'm going to start by painting the inside of the moon white. And if it drags over on top of your silhouette, it doesn't matter. You're still going to be able to see it. I mean, avoid it as much as you can, but you're still going to be able to see it. And just kind of paint it in a circular motion because that's kind of the look of the moon. It's just kind of go around in um, circular motion. It's going to be a little bit wet and that's fine. There we go. All right, so that's the first part of it. We're just going to go in there. It's going to be a little wet. We're absolutely fine with that. And we're just going to paint all of that um, white, all the inside there white. You also can make your moon bigger if you want it bigger than this too. You could also paint your moon a pale yellow if you wanted it to be a different color too. 
So you can see that along the edge, there is kind of the, you know, the purple going around the edge. So I'm just going to wet my brush a little bit. I'm leaving the white on it and I'm just going to pick up some of that purple. So I'm just going to pick up some of the purple and then I'm just going to kind of basically experiment like I'm asking you to do with going around the outer edge and seeing how dark I want this purple to be. And again, you might want to put a rainbow around yours and that'll be absolutely fine. So I'm just going to go right around the outside edge and you'll see probably about halfway through, you're going to run out of paint and um, you know, that's fine. We'll just go back in, grab some more. And you might not want it such a defined line. And if you don't, just wet your brush a little bit again and then just kind of go back over it and you'll see it kind of thins it out, gives it a softer look, blends it out just a little bit more. You, if you want, you can even kind of bring it into the moon area there more. So just experiment, kind of see how you, how you feel about it um, being like that. So, um, and also once it's painted and dry, if you look at it later and you decide, oh, I wish I would have made it bigger. I wish I would have been more bold or I wish I would have been less bold. <laughs> once it's dry, you can go back and, um, and you can uh, change those colors if you want to, okay, once it's dry. When it's still wet like this and you go to make changes, you can see you're just going to pick up the paint and it's not going to leave any paint there. But yeah, you can definitely go back and make changes to it. And then the next area is going to be the blue. And um, so it's a lighter blue and I have lighter blue colors, but I just like to show people how to um, how to blend lighter colors and get lighter colors without having to spend a lot of money on paint. So I'm just going to wet my brush again. I'm still leaving some of the purple in and some of the um, white in there. And I'm just going to mix some of the blue until it kind of gets like the color that I'd like to that second kind of circle to be. Okay. All right. And I kind of like that color. So I'm going to go around about the same um, width, about the three quarter inch brush width around it. And I'm going to kind of overlap just a wee bit into that purple area too. Oh, that's a pretty color. Isn't that a pretty color? Mm -hmm. It's like a rainbow. Almost. All right. And then you can just kind of work it. I kind of want it to be more, not such a defined line. So to do that, I'm going right where that kind of joins, where the two colors kind of join. And I'm just going to lay the brush down kind of flat and kind of go over it to get it to kind of blend a little bit more. While it's wet, you can kind of play with it a little bit. Mm. That reminds me of my next question. What is your next question? Hmm. Next question, survey says. My next question is, name a food that you hope you got milk to go with. Oh, can I say, can I say, I no, know, I know. Say. Does it food, no. just food or food and drink? Uh, name a food that you hope you got milk. <laughs> you got milk? Got milk. To go with. <laughs> All right. Put your answer in the, in the comment box there. And winners, wait, who won the last one? Um, <clears throat> Katrina? Uh, I don't know. I didn't look. All right. Didn't we look. have people texting us on, on the, in the comments and on our phones as well. So we got to look back and tally that. Now, again, my canvas is a different color. I mean, different size than yours slightly. So um, I fanned mine out just a little bit because mine is just a little bit bigger than yours. Okay. And again, if you, you know, if you want it to be a lighter or darker color, you can always go in there and add some more water into it and make it, you know, kind of more manageable there. All right. In general, with the, with the um, 12 by 12, it, the blue kind of casts all the way over to the edge. 
So I'm going to cast mine over as though I had the um, as though I had the 12 by 12. All right. So we're just going to keep kind of work it until it ends up looking like you want it to. Look. Mama said cookies. Cookies. Not just any cookies. Peanut butter cookies. <laughs> She's mama's cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I think Santa would agree with that. Although that's not the number one answer, it's a very good answer. <laughs> All right. So you're just going to kind of work this. And again, if you want to go back later and make it darker, you can do that. And then the outer edges of it is, is the darker. I get too much paint on uh, too much water on my brush is the darker blue so you can go along the um the edges with the darker blue and then remember to do the edges of the painting as well okay so we're just going to go along the darker edge i mean go along the edge with the darker blue that's going to take us just a couple minutes to do that whatever darker blue that, that you chose in there and remembering to do the sides That's a beautiful color blue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of bring it into that other blue, just like we did with the blue and the purple. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it can be kind of blotchy. You can kind of squiggle in there because it's a night sky and they're, you know, they're not perfect. You know, it's, it doesn't, it's not consistent. So just kind of, you know, use your creativity and your self-expression and make it however you want to make it. All right. And so I'm just going to paint along the edges here, which is something we all forget to do. For any of the future classes, if you want, um, if you can't find the paints or you're, you know, you live in a state where you're um, still kind of limited on being able to go out and everything, or you just don't want to go out, because that's kind of how we are, um, you can always just let me know and I can, I can mail you the, the supplies that you need. We can ship them over to you. That way you don't have to go out. All right, is everybody keeping up okay? Am I going too fast, too slow? All righty. Ah, uh, it's dark. I know, it's dark. It's a dark night. Scary. It's like starry, starry night. Scary dark. I'm going to go back and fix it up a little. That's okay, as long as we get the gist of it. Yeah. Don't forget to send us pictures of your painting yes, when they're all done. Please. Nick and I painted, um, we had a studio, so people came and painted with us, and we absolutely love that. It's it's so awesome to be able to see people's creativity and they kind of got all ideas off of each other. And it was so awesome, and then we're not able to do that anymore, so we don't get to see as many end products. Um, teaching virtually is so different than in person, and we really miss it a lot. We can't wait to get to a point where we're back, where we can um, do it in person again. So, meanwhile, yeah, if you just send us pictures, post pictures, it just means the world to us know, to know that you enjoyed the class. Or even if you didn't enjoy the class, post pictures so we can see them and feel better. Or let us know what you didn't enjoy. All right, so I'm just kind of going along the outside here. Basically, just kind of getting it the way I, I that makes me feel like, oh, that looks like that looks like a summer sky, a winter sky, a night sky, right? Right. I. Right. <clears throat> and I would like for mine to be a little less obvious here, 
And um, so I'm glad it does look obvious because I do always like to for that to happen, things like that to happen so I can show people how if that's if they want to change it, they can change it. So if you just wet your brush, get the excess off, and then just go right into those where the lines join there. And that'll soften that up. It's gonna fix that up that spot in there. The what? Fix that. What? Okay. Right here? Thanks. <laughs> the backseat driver for artists over here going on. It's not supposed to be kicking in. <laughs> All right. I kind of like the way this blends together like this. Hey. And it might be a little wet. Um, when it gets to the end, if it's too wet, then you can always use... I can't, I can't curve. Look, I can't curve. You can always use a hair dryer to dry it. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of end it there because that's where the black comes up to meet it. Um, and then your water is probably going to be dark, dark blue. And so you're going to want to change your water. So I'm going to wait just a minute while people get their water changed. Also, my napkin is full of blue paint, so I'm going to get rid of this one. Turn it upside down and use one of those other ones, boom, and get rid of this dark water that's going to make everything have that kind of color in it. And when I did that and picked it up, I dropped water on here. Again? Yeah. So I have to sock that up out of there. But you can experiment if you want with your sky. It's probably um, kind of wet from dabbing everything in there. And so you can always just you know, if you're looking to uh, to experiment some, just go in and you can kind of dab in here and just see the texture that um, that it creates. You know, experiment. You can always paint back over it later if you want to paint back over it. So I kind of like the way that I'm using the paper towel or the um, cotton ball kind of gives it some depth. Comes and gives it like a like a um, like a cloud sky kind of background. Right? Don't you think? I agree. Are you just are you just agreeing? Yes. Yeah, that's what I, I am. I'm agreeable. Hey, I have another question. Hurry up. Okay. I'm just a dabbing away here. You can ask your next question. Are you question. dabbing because I'm dabbing. I've been, I've, you're be gabbing just dabbing. Gabbing dabbing. <laughs> All right, you can ask another one. I'm just kind of playing with my night sky. All right, you can't again. answer this question, okay? On the grounds that it might intend to incriminate you. Okay. All right. Dabbing, I'm just a dabbing. Okay. I like my sky like right, that. That's great. Good. Name something that people do in their cars while stopped at a red light. No, don't answer that question. That's for the people at home. So name something. He okay. can't talk without his hands. So he's Italian, so he has to use his hands. So name something. <laughs> <laughs> name something that people do in their cars while stopping at a red light. <laughs> And go. I'm going to put the question on the chat and I'll check to see who comes up with the number one answer. All right. I know, I know. Picking your nose is not one of them. At this point, while we wait uh, for this- Mama's question. getting all the number one answers. I think she's cheating. <laughs> Mama's cheating. She would not cheat. Mama is cheating. She's disqualified. <laughs> well, Brittany, I am the judge Brittany, of this one. Brittany's so putting on makeup. Okay, that is number last on my list. Putting on makeup is? Eh. They must not have asked just women. <laughs> no, they didn't say I I. I eat. Mama I eat. said, what do you think Mama said? She said, uh, pet the dog. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. No. no. I've got uh, talking on your phone, which is number <laughs> two on my list. Sue, that's number two on the list. You were so close, and yet so far away. <laughs> um, Mama still got the number one answer, which is... Did everybody get a chance to answer? Going once, going twice. If if you if you need to get an answer in there, say wait. 
Okay. Oh, go ahead. What's the number one answer? Okay. <clears throat> Drum roll. Bad drum, I know. Number seven, apply makeup. Oh. Um, number wait. six, eat. Which not me. I would do that the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Um, number number five, five. Look around. If you gotta stop at a stop sign to look around, <laughs> when something, I look around, that's not something true. in the wrong. Everybody's on their cell phones. But even around. worse than that, number four, looking in the mirror to put on makeup. Does that go with number five? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, if you guys stop to do this, think, sing. Oh, oh, no, I'm gonna stop the stoplight that I can sing. I'm gonna stop so I can <laughs> sing. I just need to sing. <laughs> Number two, um, brush your hair, talk on the cell phone, or check your phone. And number one on the all time pop charts survey says. Adjust your radio. And that's because cars today, as you're stopping or coming to a stop, they automatically turn the volume down. Yeah. So what happens is people turn the volume up and they take off and the volume goes way up. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we're going to do is add some clouds around, um, um, around our human and our dragon. And we're just going to use a uh, cotton ball. And just kind of for right now, we're just going to dab it in the um, white. I'm going to grab just a little bit of the violet in there. And again, this is going to be just just your personal preference. Just kind of dab it around over here until it kind of looks like the way that you think that the clouds um, look. You're probably going to have to. And we're just going to kind of dab it over um, this little area over here and around the um, dragon and the human and not necessarily down into the this area at the bottom because that's going to be the, um, the area that's going to get painted black. So we're just going to kind of dab it here and we're probably going to have to do a couple layers. We're going to kind of do some in between them. It's rising up in there. Um, I'm going to put some, oh, I guess put some more paint in here. Is this water from today? This yes, is your water. that is correct. This one? Yes. Yep. So then we're just going to kind of pounce. We're just going to pounce it on here like clouds. It's like a Care Bear scene. It does. <laughs> and we're going to pounce it in between here. Once the black is on, you'll be able to definitely tell the difference in that. So when I'm looking at it, a couple things I noticed. One is my hair is falling out, and so I have a hair on my canvas here. So time out while I get the hair off my painting. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm just going to try to pounce some more over here. Some more in between here. I feel like I put too much purple here, so I'm going to pounce some over top of it. Again, I like when I do stuff like that because then that way I can kind of show you. Those are Sue's you know, favorite colors. They are the Care Bear colors. <laughs> <laughs> I like these colors. And you can put the clouds kind of rising up as high as you want. There's a couple other clouds, you know, that kind of come over here. And you can just kind of put them however. If you don't have... Um, if you don't have a um, cotton ball, you can always use, like I said, a makeup sponge or ball up a paper towel and kind of put it on there, um, whatever you, you know, whatever you think. I'm going to just kind of put some clouds randomly over here, kind of going up over here. All right, so you can put as many clouds as you want on there and as much color, as much colors as you want in there. The purple kind of just gives it some depth. So we can kind of add some purple over here. And then we'll just kind of keep adding layers to it. And you can kind of add a kind of, like the clouds are just kind of all puffed around over here. It's all how you want it to look. All right, that was too much purple for me. So I'm just going to put it in here like that. Now, 
when when mama paints she uses angel dust or glitter and i think that the glitter would look really good in these clouds so what i like to do when i get to um when i'm painting something like that and i'm like oh, i'm not quite sure how much more i want to do i like to just stop and just let that piece be just kind of like i did with the night sky and everything just let that be a little bit and then i'm going to come back to it and just i kind of let the painting talk to me like i'll come back to it later and think okay well that kind of looks a little lopsided or that didn't turn out as bright as i wanted it to be or or however so i like to just stop and go on to another part of it and then come back and um, look at it so the next thing we're going to do is actually feels like all of my white is dry here so we're going to go in and we're going to be brave and just start painting black inside the silhouette all right all right is everybody good with where we're at right now though is everybody good with the clouds do you need a moment for it to dry or um, to figure out where to go next is everybody good with that Oh, see, I have a splot of blue there. It looks good. It looks like it's, um... I don't want a splot of blue there. All right. <laughs> All right. How, how soon before we get to my favorite color? What's your favorite color? Black. black. Here we go. Let's... So we're going to fill in with black. If you have a big, fat, black marker, you can fill it in. If you have a black paint marker, you can fill it in. But I'm going to, um, I'm going to just splot down some black here. And I'm going and, to ask the next question while you get almost done with that. So. All right. And then I'm just going to start filling in the black areas. You can use um, you can use a number two round brush, which kind of looks like this. But my number two round brush is pretty ratty for not taking good care of it or somebody borrowing it and not taking good care of I know it. You are looking and this so direction. I also like to use I have this little flat uh, number six brush, which will work well or I have a number four that'll work well. So whatever brush actually that you feel comfortable filling in those black areas with, you use that, okay? All right, so I'm gonna start on the filling in the black areas. I'm so excited. And I'm actually going to um, start left to right because I'm right-handed. And for me, if I start right, if I start the opposite direction, I'll drag my hand through it. So that's kind of the way that um, that I do it. So I don't end up either wearing it or dragging my hand through it. All right, more questions? Okay. Since we're doing black, we'll do a dark color, a dark question. Let's find my question here. He lost his question. All right. Next question is. Ouch. <laughs> Give me one word that describes someone who gets on your nerves. They have, they get in my bubble and they get uh, too close. Next question is name to... or give, give me a word that describes someone who gets on your nerves. Someone who gets on they your poke, nerves. They poke your fat belly. <laughs> okay, while well, you guys are painting that, I'm going to post this one. All right. I'm going to do all my little spiky things first. <laughs> Mama says trouble. <laughs> you can't name your dog. <laughs> Sue says limpy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't name your dog. That's her dog's name. <laughs> uh, actually, his wings would have been so cool in red, wouldn't they? Or purple. Or purple. Wait. 
All right. Well, it's awful quiet over there. So uh, give I'm me a focusing. Story. I'm give, focusing. Give me a story or something. Does anyone know? Speaking of dragons, does anyone know? Puff the magic dragon. Yeah, Puff the magic dragon. The song. The song and. He lives by the sea. Yes, but do you know the bad gossip story that was going around about Puff the Magic Dragon. He was what? He now, was... does anybody else know? Chime in if you know the bad gossip story that was going around about the song Puff the Magic Dragon. No, I think you should just tell me. It was before your time. I know. I was... You were just a kid. I watched Peach Dragon. I love Peach Dragon. That was one of my favorite movies. All right, how's everybody else's dragon doing? Or are you waiting till next time? Are you waiting to paint a different time? Just let me know. So the bad, so can you sing Puff the Magic Dragon? Yeah, far, far away. <laughs> let's all sing it together. No, let's not. I'm going to mute the mic. I think we should I'm, I'm all sing Puff the Magic Dragon together. No. Nope. So the bad story about Puff the Magic Dragon is that somebody started the rumor that Puff the Magic Dragon was a bad song about drugs. <gasps> no. Yes. The marijuana? Yes, they the said Mary it's, Jane? Yes, they said it was that it was really a song about people smoking pot because they were puffing on it. Oh man. Is that cool? The Minerva. <laughs> I just can't believe they would say that. Because he, he lived by the sea. Yes. Which is another word for hash. I guess. <laughs> That's what they were saying. So even back then, people were starting vicious rumors. Okay, the, so the dragon friend appears to be a boy, but if you if you wanted your little dragon friend to be a girl, all you kind of all you have to do is kind of give a little flip on the hair. So if you um if you want me to show you how to do that, just send me a comment and I'll turn my little boy into a little girl here so that you can kind of see what that would look like. Okay. So instead of having like this bald head look going on, you would just um, flip some hair on there. So if that's what you want to do, then just let me know. If you're painting later and you want an instruction how to do that, then just send me a, a quick message and I can show you how to do it. I'll send you a quick video of how to do it. Hmm. So, uh, one of the give me one of the words to describe someone who gets on your nerves. Number, number four on our list is a pest. A pest. <laughs> number three is loud. A loud. Loud. Oh, you mean loud? They're loud. They're loud. Number. Hey, that sounds like you're. Number X. Number two. Oh wait, they all sound like her. <laughs> irritating. Yeah, they do. They all sound like your. And ex. number one on the list is this conversation right now, which is getting to be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so annoying was number one. Number one. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to do a quick speed round for Mama and Sue. Okay. All right. Look out. Spin All right. Round. Mama and Sue. I've got a little three questions for you guys. Uh oh. Look out. And I'm going to ask you three questions. And then you just write in your answer. And then I'm going to tally up how many points you get. So this is a survey. 100 people were asked. Is this the first question? Yes. Okay. First question. This is from Mama and Sue. This is like your tiebreaker. Best out of three. <laughs> All right. Question number one. Name something you do when you want to buy something you can't afford. And go. Can I answer? No. <laughs> I'll read it again for you one more time. One more time, the question is for Mama and Sue. Name something you do when you 
want to buy something and you can't afford it. All right, I'm going to check the answers over here. Okay. Let's go. see. Come on, Sue, wait on you. Come on, don't let me down. She's thinking. Look how adorable he is. <laughs> you need a bigger brush for the bottom, right? I think so, yeah. I think I'm just going to use that one. Just trying to get all of his little fins in there. Okay, let me let me rewrite the question for Sue. Uh oh. Okay. What fell on the floor? Does it matter? No, hopefully it wasn't okay. paint. <laughs> Name something you do when you want to buy something but you can't afford it. So it's not so an object. It's what do you do if you can't afford it? What do you do when you can't afford it? Name something you would do if you saw something that you wanted and you couldn't afford it. And you couldn't afford it. Mama, where are you, Mama? All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and paint all the rest of this black. I hope you guys are getting your black done. I love black. It's such a nice, solid color to work with. So dependable. So I'm going to, I switched to a bigger brush because I'm going, I'm going into bigger areas now. So I just did that outline and now I'm just switching to a bigger brush. Mama says, leave the store. <laughs> That's a true story. That's 13 points for Mama on the, on the board with 13 <laughs> points for Mama. Let me put that on there. 13. All right. So on the bottom, I have the three quarter inch brush and I'm just going to paint basically two, um, two widths of that up. Okay. And then we're going to draw in the, um, the little grassy area. So you gotta try it again. You can't have the same answer. <laughs> I'm gonna hear a little eh eh. <laughs> try again. What'd she say? Leave the store. Leave the store. <laughs> what else would you do? What else could you do? And remember to paint along the edges black as well. The edge of the canvas has to be black as well. And you'll notice my black line here isn't exactly even. That's because I'm going back to add kind of that grassy look to it. And so it doesn't really matter if it's even or not. Alrighty. Oh, that's almost all the black. I see I skipped a little tiny area there of black. All right, Sue says oh, stay you. home. That's <laughs> 10 points. Good job, Sue. For Sue. Okay. I'm just going to paint in my little rest of my towel here. Okay, you keep painting. I'm going to ask one more question. So far, Mom was winning 13 to 10. All right. Uh, let's see here. They have two more questions, right? All right, we can't answer that one. All right, name something people do those days instead of reading a book. These days? These days. Name some people do instead yes. of reading a book. Look how cute he's looking. Oh, great. Thanks. Yay. So I'm just going to go along the top edge of the um, black line here. It's supposed to be like a grassy area. And I'm using, I'm just going to use this um, ruined bristle brush. But you can use the edge of your um, other brush that you were using. 
and just pull up random pieces of the black here. Just ran, there was another piece of my hair. <laughs> so just pull up, you know, random grass. You're just gonna make a straight stroke up because that grass is wet there still. So basically you're just gonna go into this black. I'm using um, this little flat brush, but you can use your three quarter inch brush too. And then just kind of go into this wet area here and just pull grass up. You can do it long ways or the short way, or you can get some more black paint on there. And it's kind of, the grassy area is kind of to the right and left of the dragon and the little boy there. And there's a little in between here where they're, they're sitting. There's a little bit in here. And you just, you can make it all different heights. Until it just looks like it's grass. I, I have an issue with this little area right here because believe it or not, I have another hair of mine that fell out on there. All right, so we're just kind of doing more of the silhouette area. Not here because that's his tail, but just all along in here. I'm just adding some black in there so it looks like grass in there coming up. Looks good. Looks really, really good. No, he's so cute, right? Yeah. All right, I think we have a winner here. I thought it was three questions. Oh, well, Sue's got 56 points for... You said three watch questions. Watch TV. Yay. Number one answer. Yeah. Mom says play a game. Only worth eight points. Wow. <laughs> Nobody else does what we do, I guess. Yep. So the score right now is 21 to 66 on <laughs> Sue's. That was, who would have thought that people do that instead? All right, you said three questions. All right, right? I'm going to ask one last question. Okay, one more question. All right. All right, while you ask one more question, we're going to just look at this and just look if you want to add to your clouds here any i kind of like the way my clouds look yeah, so um if you do want to add your clouds you can go in there and add your clouds the next thing we're going to do is put the basically the stars and the, and the sky up here and to do that we're going to use the bottom of one of our brushes that have a round <laughs> okay. a rounded edge and that don't have a burr on the end of it because some of them kind of have a burr so my big fat, um, I'll take some more water too. So my big fat um, three quarter inch brush has a nice rounded edge to it. So I'm gonna use that. And it looks like some of my white paint has dried up. So I'm gonna put down some more white paint. And then we're just gonna put stars all in the sky. And when we do that, oh, thank you. Thanks. So to do that, we're just going to put the um, brush, the end of the brush, in the paint and on the canvas, and in the paint and on the canvas, okay? If you want the dots to be um, the same size, which with stars, they don't necessarily have to be, you're going to want to go once on the canvas, once in the paint, once on the canvas, once in the paint. If you want your dots to be smaller, get a smaller brush that has a nice rounded end and put it in the paint and on the canvas. All right. And when you're ready to do your shooting star, what we're going to do is in the paint. And if you want, do it on your, do it on your plate first, do it on your uh, palette first. So you can kind of see what it looks like. But the shooting star is once in the paint onto the canvas and then just drag it over. Okay. And if you want it to be longer, you can use your brush and pull it, pull it over longer. And you can grab the end and just kind of make it like that for a shooting star. Because to me, it looks like, to me, it looks like that's what they're doing is sitting there watching the shooting star. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and add the rest of the stars on there and then anything else you want to add. And then we'll basically almost be done. 
just in time for Family Feud winner. All right, tell Mama that. she's eating strawberries and whipped cream till it stop. <laughs> and answer the last question. <laughs> okay. Mama for the last question. Mama and Sue. Oh, Mama and Sue. Yeah. Pay attention. And here we go. This is it. This is going to be the game breaker. The person who gets the number one answer will win the game, no matter who it is. <laughs> Name something you feel for in the dark. That you feel around for. Right? Name something you feel for in the dark. Oh, looks good. I'm liking Little it. Shooting star. Yeah, I'm liking it. Yeah. Mama says, "Ooh, looks really good." Eyeglasses. Eyeglasses. <laughs> Sue right. says, "The wall." <laughs> <laughs> That's when you're getting up to go to the bathroom, and you got to make sure you don't <laughs> run into the wall. <laughs> Uh, well, neither one of you got the number one answer. I, th I would have thought eyeglasses. Really? Uh, yeah. I you can't see without them. Oh, huh? that's not what I would have thought. For, you know, I mean, a flashlight would have been reasonable. I think, um, your phone. No. Oh. I fell off my phone because I need it to see in the dark. I All right, looks like we have a tie between Mama <laughs> and Sue. So if neither one of you came up with the number one answer. What which was the number one answer? A light switch. Oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. Okay, I guess. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Okay, we are just about done with our dragon and friend painting. At this point, you can. If you want to um, go back and add more stars in the sky, add more comments if you want to, put some glitter in here. If you're going to put glitter on it, put glitter on it while it's still wet. If you want to go back later after you painted it and put glitter on it, then um, wet it again and then the glitter will stick. Because I think the glitter will make it really stand out here. Um, and... Uh, like I said, if you want to go back and change the sky color, make a rainbow, make a little boy into a little girl, make the dragon's wings red if that's what you want to do, just make it your own. And we really appreciate you guys joining us tonight. We hope you'll join us um, other nights for other paintings. Remember, Saturday night we are going to be doing this adorable, adorable llama. Is that upside down? No. Llama. There he is now. <laughs> a llama and um he's going to be on a 16 by 20 canvas if you want the tracer the pattern just um send me a message so i can email that to you along with the supply list looks like there's about seven colors on that and we'll use the same basically the same um brushes but he's so cute and again we'll be giving away for everyone that that posts their picture of the llama we'll be giving away a motivational um bracelet and we'll be doing a little bit of trivia for people to win prizes. So thanks again, everybody, for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Have a good rest of your evening.